Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Conqueror Gun Carriage. It's the Tier 10 British SPG. This one's located on the north spawn of Ghost Town and it's under the command of Ignac. Uh, yes, he has got um, OG Ignac as his actual name and then KD right at the end after a long uh, underline. No idea what that means, but we'll just call him Ignac. Okay, it's a 9.2 inch howitzer located on top of a hull that would have belonged to a Conqueror tank. So another heavy tank conversion into an RT. Unfortunately, it's Wargaming's total invention because it never actually existed and oh, we seem to have lost sight of the other vehicles that are actually alongside this Conqueror gun carriage as he makes his way with his Corbin Dallas colours all the way up to the uh, far east side of the map. Now he's capable of doing a thousand alpha and penetrating 59mm of armour with that howitzer. Its actual calibre is 233.7 so it's the second biggest howitzer in the game. And yes he seems to be getting uh, a lot of, um, shall we say, it's not very um, He's getting a lot of uh, problems with his connection at the moment. Okay, well, he's looking to hit some of the enemy tanks over in the town. Changed his mind. Whoa, now. He switched shell, he's going to go to the heavy S um, HE to fire into that bush. Oh my god, he just killed a manticore in the bush. <coughs> no, unless he knew that there was a manticore. Now, there's no indication that there was anybody there. You have to wonder how he absolutely knew that that guy was there. Very, very odd indeed. Yep, there he is. So, yes, good that he killed that light, but how did he have a clue that that guy was sitting in that bush? No, no clue whatsoever. Rounds out on the uh, 60 TP, and he gets a hit for 543, which is a high roll non-penetration. Yeah, whenever we see suspicious kills like that, we do wonder. I can understand somebody going for the spotting bush on Malinovka and getting a direct hit and a kill because that's such a well-known spotting position. I guess that this player, Ignac, must actually also play in manticores and light tanks and therefore knows that spotting position. But he's now going after the gorilla and gets a direct hit on him and he's got a fire as well. So he's got a considerable amount of damage on that. 536 for the hit. Which actually, funnily enough, is a non-penetrating shot, but it's set light to the engine, and you got another 264 out of it. So, yes, I'd say that that uh, gorilla hasn't got much longer to live. Okay, we've got a Death Star here, the FB215B 183. Just trying to work out which way the guy's going. Okay, stop momentarily, but he's now started moving before the shell arrives, so he doesn't get anything out of that whatsoever. From this angle, he can actually shoot into the enemy territory and get the guys who are actually at that confrontation point near the uh, d the um, buildings. But the problem is that uh, you are fairly vulnerable out here in this corner. The good thing is that the Conqueror does actually have the a very high trajectory, and he gets a near miss on the Centurion action ten for three six seventy three. And the T-92 follows up. Now he doesn't want to get too close to the rock, because if he does, he might get spotted. There is an enemy tank not far away. I'm trying to get up the hill at the moment to kill our guys on the area overlooking. We're one down on the enemy. I don't want them to get an advantage. Okay, we've got a Jaegeru in the centre of town. 
He's just taking a hit. Rounds out. Well, that was interesting. He actually fired an armor piercing round there. The armor piercing is capable of 720 alpha and penetrating 370 millimeters of armor. He managed to get 667, so he did pen. But he didn't get a high roll, he actually got a low roll. And he's loading another armor piercing. He's sw swapping, sw switching his aim on a regular basis. Which is making it fairly difficult to follow, but he's loaded and he fires around at the Viz and misses. That's unfortunate. Probably would have been better off firing at the Jaeger, but I think the Jaeger moved out of the way. And the Viz 55 just killed our Hesh Bomb. We're still one down on the enemy, but they seem to have the position on us. They're doing very well. There's the object 140, just got struck by our enemy RT. And well, he got some. He got a direct hit there on the Viz 55, but he only got 399. 339, I should say. And he got some stun assist as well. But I think that was down to the fact that so he hit the frontal armor, which is a lot stronger. Okay, he's switching again. The most likely enemy that's going to see him is the Object 705 over near the town and being spotted by our gorilla now. There's the enemy gorilla. He's just within range and he's gone. Okay, so 705's next. Technically, he's a one shot. If we can get a round on him, we just saw the tracer coming from where the enemy RT is located. Oh, and he gets killed just a fraction of a second before we get our shot in. And so, unfortunately, that shell has been wasted. Now, the T-92 might be able to fire from where he's located at the moment, near the rock. But the fact is, the Conqueror gun carriage doesn't fire over the entire range of the map. In fact, it used to be much worse until they did the nerf, and then they had to increase its range. Otherwise, it would become very, very short-range RT and very vulnerable to enemy fire. Okay, he's trying to get shots on a TVP T5051. No, he's decided I'm going to get a bit closer still. Oh, now this is interesting. A gorilla's gone into the town. He's trying to get a shot on him. Fires a blind one in. Oh my gum, how did he work that one out? He worked out the gorilla was going to be going through that gap and fired it in and got a hit. I get the feeling now that they're changing position because the worry is that the Viz 55, who's killed all the enemy, uh, all of our friendly tanks up on top of the hill, is actually possibly potentially headed eastward. So they're going after the Death Star. Ramps out. Lands to the left. Unfortunately, only gets some splash. Tiny amount. 49 hit points. But he does get some stun assist, so at least he's got something there. The enemy T-92 has been spotted. Okay, there's their object 261 right up on top of the hill. They've killed the T-92, so we're going to try and kill the object 261. That might deny our teammate of a Piscucci's. But at least we might be able to get some hit points here. Rounds out. And yes, it does splash the 261 for 390 leaving our Gorilla to take him out and it's actually Centurion who gets the kill depriving the uh, the Gorilla but I think he did get a Pascucci's actually I think he was the one who actually got the kill on T92 there's only two enemies left the TVP T5051 and that Viz 55 who didn't follow up after all so this move down the east side of the map actually was all for nothing. There's the Viz 55, who hasn't lost a huge amount of hit points, but he has now. And we didn't get the kill there. That actually went to the T-92. We got his shot in just before we did again. 
and that means now the only enemy left is the grill of uh, the TVP and he's just been killed so that's the end of the game here's the end of battle stats and that was an ace tanker game for OG Ignac KD he actually managed to get a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits in fact he got nine a gauze medal for doing more damage exceeding eight times the hit points of his own vehicle and a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team and that's despite the fact that he got two kills in that game one of which was a totally blind kill with absolutely no knowledge that the enemy was there because of course nobody had spotted the manticore at all so i do wonder how he actually managed to work that one out the manticore was one of the blind kills actually and one of the penetrations i think um just trying to work this out it looks like it's one of the penetrations and another one was actually the Jagdpanzer, which of course was an armor piercing round, went through his side. Let's have a look at team score. Well, the highest damage in the game actually went to Ignite. Yes, he got 4,939 hit points out of that game. The second highest damage turned out to be the Badger on his own team with 3,572, followed by the Death Star on the enemy team with 3,380. When it came to kills, it was the M454 who did the best. He got four kills out of that one. Uh, three kills, Robert. Uh, alongside the Centurion Action 10. And yes, he did get that for Scucci's Middle because he was the one who killed both the enemy RT. And uh, nobody on the enemy team managed to get three kills. So it's just shared between these two for the top spot. And we can see that Ignac actually joined second because uh, the Gorilla 15 on his own team, Ignac... The 60 TP and three members of the enemy team, their Jaegeru, their Viz 55 and the TVP T5051 all managed two kills. When it came to base XP, Ignat got that one, so he's got two out of three in this one. Two out of three in the top of the column. 947 went to Ignat, 912 went to the Badger and 847 went to the 60 T Lewandowski go. He fired 13 shots in the game, got six direct hits on the enemy and two penetrations. We spotted those, the Manticore and the Jaegeru. Seven splashes, damage of 4,939 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damaged eight of the enemy, killed two of them and earned 1,103 hit points of stun assist off only four stuns. He earned 47,310 credits on a premium count, 21,290 from battle payments and 65,483 on personal missions payout. So he earned a total of 157,738 credits altogether. But after ammunition resupplies and consumables, he actually ended up with only 83,708 credits, but that's still a good, good total. 947 XP, 2,842 from personal missions payout and took away 4,263 experience points altogether he says it was an easy 5k um well i mean yes i suppose you could say but how did he work out where that manticore was that was a really weird first kill i he actually even selected to go for the uh imp improved uh he the one that does more damage but has no stun to ensure that he actually got the penetration on that manticore and wiped him out I guess he must know that that's the spotting bush for Manticores on this particular map. And maybe he's played the Manticore himself a lot. And he knows that that's the place that most people would go to. But it certainly was quite surprising to get a, a blind kill straight off the map. Um, also interesting that he penetrated the side of that Jaeger. And he actually selected the armor piercing round to actually punch through the side. But it was a pity that he tried the same trick with the Viz 55 and it didn't work mainly because actually he was trying to go for the frontal armor of this 55 i think you are much better off trying to punch through the weak side armor of a tank rather than trying to go through the frontal armor i've tried using arm piercing rounds uh, from some arties on enemy tanks and although technically it should have gone through it never did it actually bounced off the enemy and you have to wonder if wargaming have modeled the armor piercing correctly or if they've only just got around to doing it and uh, they finally got it right. But I do wonder about it because obviously an armor piercing round from an RT, even though it's going slightly slower than some of the armor piercing rounds coming from tanks, 
uh, they are very high caliber shells and you would think that when they hit a, a tank um, something with a 233.4 uh, 233.7 millimeter shell rather should absolutely wipe the tank out with just one round uh, because I think it would just make a total mess of everything inside the vehicle. If you enjoyed that replay please give this video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm and thank you for watching.